Talking about the knee region, we have a specialized group of muscles other than the hamstrings and the uh, cordyceps and that is not because of their common function or their uh, location being anteriorly or posteriorly. They are actually uh, classified because they are common attachment site and they are known as pass anserine and they are also commonly associated with a clinical condition known as uh, uh, pass anserine bursitis as well. And uh, other than that, connective tissues are very important if we talk or discuss the uh, anatomy of any region. And here we talk about the connective tissues, the fascia and the uh, bursa, etc. And that's what we're going to talk about in this lecture as well. We're going to talk about the pass and shrine group of muscles, the ligaments, the menisci of the knee joint, as well as the bursa. So what is pass and shrine group of muscles? So talking about the pass and shrine group of muscles, these are actually uh, taken from the Latin word which means goose foot because it has goose foot is like this. So it has three toes and a webbed foot. So because of that, uh, we have given it a name the pass and shrine because it also has three muscles. And if you take a look at it, it also looks like a goose foot. So it has three muscles consisting of sartorius, gracilis, and semitendinosus. Semitendinosus is also a part of another group of muscles also known as the hamstring group of muscles which are the prime movers in knee flexion. Now even though all of these muscles have a different proximal attachment or these muscles have a common distal attachment or insertion. Now talking about the these muscles having their different proximal attachment sites so the sartorius muscle arises anteriorly from the anterior superior spine just above the rectus femoris muscle and it attaches to the common pass and shrine insertion. Similarly, the gracilis muscle attaches medially uh, or originates medially from the pubis but has the common pass and shrine insertion. And similarly, semitendinosus, which is located medially and posteriorly, arises from the ischial tuberosity but it has the common uh, once again the pass and shrine attachment site. So they all cross the knee posteriorly and then move towards the medial aspect and they join together to have a common distal attachment and that common pass and shrine distal attachment is the anterior medial surface of the proximal tibia as located here. So you can see these muscles having their different Proximal attachments have a common distal attachment and they're all coming and having this common distal attachment on the proximal uh, uh, aspect of the tibia at the anterior aspect. Now, as already mentioned, that it is associated with a very common clinical condition, which is known as pass and shrine bursitis. So there are around 13 different bursa around the knee joint, and one is just located beneath the pass and shrine uh, group of muscles at their common distal attachment or insertion site. And due to their uh, rubbing with the bursa, it can sometimes lead to inflammation of the bursa leading to the bursitis. So here we can see this is the uh, pes and serine bursa or the enserine bursa here and the inflammation of which can cause pain and inflammation and known as enserine bursitis. Now it is another clinical significance is that orthopedic surgeons sometimes alter this common attachment to provide for medial stability to the knee as well so that it covers the knee instead in this figure you can see it's not covering the knee so it covers the knee on the medial aspect and provides the dynamic stability component to the knee joint. Now talking about the knee region and the connected tissue of the knee region we have the ligaments of the knee region so the most important ligaments are the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments and medial and later collateral ligaments. So anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments are actually named after their attachment with the uh, tibia. So anterior cruciate ligaments attaches to the anterior aspect of the tibia whereas the posterior cruciate ligaments attaches to the posterior aspect of the tibia. And the function is that the anterior cruciate ligaments, ligament limits the anterior translation of the tibia on the femur whereas the posterior cruciate ligament limits the posterior translation of the tibia on femur. So here we can see this is the anterior cruciate ligament and this is the posterior cruciate ligament. So as you can see that uh, posterior cruciate ligament has its anterior attachment on the 
femur and not on the tibia and it's posterior attachment on the tibia that is why it's known as posterior cruciate ligament and the anterior cruciate ligament has its anterior attachment on the tibia and it's posterior attachment on the femur and that is why because it's named after the attachment with the tibia so it is known as the anterior cruciate ligament other than that the two other important uh, ligaments is the uh, lateral cruciate ligament and the medial cruciate ligament so lateral cruciate ligament is uh, very important because it serves as the uh, it restraint for the uh, medial angulation or various stress whereas the medial collateral ligament uh, acts as a restraint for the lateral angulation or valgus stress now another difference between the lateral and medial cruciate uh, lateral and medial collateral ligaments is that there is no attachment of the lateral collateral with the lateral meniscus as you can see here there's a clear gap here but if we take a look at the medial collateral ligament it is attached with the medial meniscus so, and that is the reason why medial meniscus is more commonly injured uh, than the lateral meniscus because it is attached to the lateral collateral ligaments and the forces which are produced as a result of valgus angulation at the medial collateral ligament can actually be transferred to the uh, can actually be transferred to the uh, medial uh, meniscus and that can cause the tear or the injury of the medial meniscus as well now the ligament here is the patellar ligament which attaches the patella uh, and thus the quadriceps uh, to the tibia via the tibial tuberosity here we can again see that uh, here we have the lateral or the fibular collateral ligament here we have the medial collateral ligament with its attachment with the medial meniscus no attachment of the lateral meniscus with the lateral collateral ligament and here we can see posterior cruciate ligament and anterior cruciate ligament now this here is actually a cross-sectional view of the proximal aspect of the tibia and these are actually the articular surface of the medial condyle and articular surface of the lateral condyle and this is where the uh, medial and lateral meniscus is present because these are actually very shallow and they do not provide enough congruency for stability to the knee joint to receive the very much convex uh, femoral condyle so what happens is that we have a wedge-shaped uh, menisci which actually deepen the surface of the tibial plateau or the tibial condyles providing uh, appropriate congruency for the knee joint stability and here they are they are actually semilunar wedge shaped uh, connective tissue structures which are made up of uh, uh, fibrocartilage and this here is the medial meniscus it is more it has a greater risk of uh, injury because of its attachment with the medial collateral ligament and they are thicker peripherally and thinner uh, medially or centrally which makes them suitable for providing a deeper surface and greater congruency for receiving the femoral condyles on the tibial articulating surface as we discussed the uh, patient strain bursitis and in that time i said that there are about 13 different bursa located so let's review them as well so we have the subcutaneous pre bursa so subcutaneous as the name suggests is just beneath the skin and pre just above the patella so subcutaneous this is the skin just subcutaneous and pre coming beneath the skin and above the uh, patella and uh, the second is the deep infra so it is going to be deep and below the below the patella so deep infra patella infra bursa is located here and is between the proximal tibia and patella ligament then is the subcutaneous just beneath the skin subcutaneous infra patella so this is the subcutaneous infra patella also known as the superficial infra, infra patella bursa and this is located between the tubal tuberosity and the skin supraspatellar as the name suggests it is located above the patella but beneath the uh, cordyceps tendon or the muscle and this is uh, between the distal femur and cordyceps tendon and one special property of this muscle is that it, uh, it is continuous with the joint space of the uh, knee joint gastrocnemius bursa is located posteriorly as you can see here and it is once again continuous with the knee joint space and it is located between the lateral head of the gastrocnemius muscle and capsule we also have the biceps bursa uh, which is not uh, available uh, in this figure and uh, that is once again 
between the fibular collateral ligament and biceps tendon and because this uh, image or view is giving you a medial view but that can be observed on the lateral view. The popliteal bursa as we already discussed it is just located beneath the uh, popliteal muscle and it is located between the popliteal tendon and the lateral femoral condyle. Then we have the gastrocnemius bursa which is in between the medial and head of the gastrocnemius muscle and capsule. So that is why this is the gastrocnemius muscle and here is the gastrocnemius bursa. So we have two gastrocnemius bursa, one beneath the uh, medial head and one beneath the lateral head. Then we have the semimembranosus muscle, this is the semimembranosus muscle and beneath the, uh, between the tendon of the semimembranosus muscle and the tibia we have the semimembranosus bursa which is located just here. So this was all about the bursa located posteriorly and at the end we have the bursa located medially and laterally. So we can visualize the base, uh, the bursa located medially which is the anthrine bursa also known as the pes anthrine bursa and is located beneath the pes anthrine group of muscles which is the sartorius, gracilis and semitendinosus, which is located here. The lateral muscles cannot be visualized in this figure because this is the medial view and they include the iliotibial band which is uh, beneath the iliotibial band at its distal attachment and we have the fibrocollateral ligament bursa which is beneath the uh, fibrocollateral ligament next to the bone. So that's all about the bursas uh, and the connective tissues of the knee joint as well as we also talk about the uh, pes and shrine uh, group of muscles and I hope you learned something new out of it and keep on watching scarday.com for more lectures like this. Thank you very much.